Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Steel Flyers video cast. We are joined by two of the greats. How you doing? The professor and pearls of wisdom. We're going to get into some pregame action. The Flyers and the Islanders. Perlo, how you doing, buddy? Oh, I'm doing fine, my friend. I actually had a nice little break and back zoned into hockey again. Did a little live this morning. Now... I'm back doing this exciting for this Philadelphia Flyers Islanders match. It's been a great series so far, and I've liked the way Philadelphia played last game, and I'm really excited to see if they can keep it going. I agree. I agree. Joe, Professor Joe, hey, man, how you doing, buddy? How are things going? Doing well. It was nice. I agree, Piro. It was nice to step back and just listen to music and do other things for a couple days. Um, but it's been nice. Now we have back-to-backs again. Um so we will get to watch a lot of the Flyers here and then uh, enjoy some of these games and everything. So it'll be nice. Exactly. And we're going to get into that here. Uh, first, I just want to say something. Look, we understand um, that the NHL took a break and we understand that, that it was something that um, was more uh, than the NHL. And we understand that. OK, and we're not going to get into any reasons as to why. And where or anything like that, we stand behind the NHL and we stand behind uh, what they're trying to do and and we stand behind their message. Uh, But we're not going to get into any of that kind of stuff because what we're going to get into is hockey. And that's what we're about. And that's what we're going to talk about. Okay. And Professor Joe kicked us right off by saying we have back to backs and we're getting into back to backs again. So before we had our little break, before we stepped away, we were getting into a back-to-back situation there where Carter Hart played, and then the next game was supposed to be uh, uh, played the very next day. So I'm going to start off with you, Professor Joe. We're now looking at a back-to-back situation now. We've had a couple days rest. Uh, I believe that Carter Hart's going to be in net tonight. Uh, I haven't seen anything to the contrary. I would Uh, think so. Yeah, what do you think? It's been two days, so I would think he's definitely going to be in net tonight. Um, Tomorrow's going to be interesting because I don't know why the NHL moved our game because it kind of seems weird to play a 7 and then an 8 o'clock game as a back-to-back. Normally, you have an earlier game and then you play a later game as your back-to-back, but for some reason, nobody thought of that. Um, So that's going to be interesting to think in because that's a pretty quick turnaround. Normally, it's like, oh, we're playing at noon, and then you're playing at 8 tomorrow which we were originally supposed to be scheduled for noon. We were supposed to be the game that already finished. And then they moved Tampa and Boston and moved us up. So it's going to be interesting, but I think because of a two-day layoff, he's already went back-to-back for so many consecutive days. Like, he was like, well, like, like it was so ridiculous out of the last 10 days how many days Carter Hart was in the net for. So yeah, like, yeah, yeah. now that he's had a couple of days off, I don't think he's probably going to let you not play him tomorrow, to be honest. There you but, go. Like, I think it's going to be, oh, no, I'm playing tomorrow. (laughs) (laughs) No, that's a great point, man. I really agree with you on that. Perlo, drop some wisdom on me here, buddy. What do you think about that? We're we're getting into another back-to-back here, man. And uh, you think Carter Hart's going to be starting tonight, and then what do you think how it's going to lead into uh, tomorrow's game? I think Carter Hart will be in tonight for sure. Um, Assuming they win, and I assume they will. Assume, Phil, I assume we will win this game. Uh, I believe we will, actually. <laughs> I actually have money on it and gave it to my clients. Wow. Uh, sure. Wow. So okay, this. there you go. You uh, heard it right here first. <laughs> Pearl yeah. actually put the wallet down, baby. Woo! <laughs> yeah, and the reason why is I would give Philadelphia the greater advantage with the two-day break for their legs to be fresh coming in. Uh, now you'd say, okay, well, it's going to take a while. I don't think it's going to take anything to get the legs going again. It's only two days. It should be fine. Um, and I saw that speed in the neutral zone I was looking for. And as long as I'm, as long as we see that speed in the neutral zone against the Islanders, I think they have a game that can crush them. If they don't have it, the Islanders will crush them. So do I think, I think Hart will be in. I think we will win. And then, um, we'll probably ride Hart again. Again tomorrow too. Um, it's if there if Elliot is going to play, I think it'd probably be tomorrow. Um, so you but, think he'll play the second game? Yeah, I think if he's going to play, if he's going to, yeah, yeah, yeah. Play. 
Um, I <coughs> what Joe is saying Excuse there me. about uh, the the back to back. It's not just the back to back. It's the time in between the back to backs. Then Almost we're gonna like have a tough week tomorrow because for if the le if the legs on both teams aren't going very well, if we're t if both teams are tired, I give more of a lean to the Islanders because the slower game goes to the Islanders in that sense. So yeah. tomorrow will be the grinder out type of game that we'll see. I bet you we'll definitely see our uh, Braun and all of those guys in to make sure we're winning the physical battles against a team that can beat people very well if they don't have their legs. So, uh, I, but I mean, for sure, uh, uh, I think Carter Hart will be in tonight. Absolutely, no doubt about it. Okay, that was we also be... saw earlier the other game. It seemed like the guys had their legs a little bit. Twenty six, uh, thirty shots. Um, guys were moving around pretty good and getting on the op like the Lightning had like four rushes in the first period. Yeah, um, right. So it didn't seem like the two day. I agree with you with that. It didn't seem like the two day layoff had a huge effect on the physicality and the aggressiveness of players too much. Yeah, yeah, it actually no, might was, have had a greater effect because they fought at the end of the one period and just tackled each other. Yeah, I was going to say yes. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, so I mean, <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> I, I I think that Carter Hart's going to start tonight, and quite honestly, I think that I think Elliot's going to see some time uh, on on Sunday. That's 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 just my gut feeling. Just, and I'm look, I'm not trying to take anything away from Carter Hart at all, and. I think I agree a lot with what you said, Joe, as far as the fact that he's going to probably play tonight and and if he plays very well, which I'm expecting him to do so, uh, is going to be like, yeah, no, you, I'm not coming out. You're, I'm, I'm playing the next game and that's just how it's going to be. You know what I mean? So, But then I also agree with you, Perlo, because I also think that Elliot might play the next game. You know what I mean? And I just kind of... I don't know. I just feel that way. I, just because. Now, you also made another great point too, Perlo, with the um, back to back. Because this is exactly what happened the last time we had a back to back, where we played at eight seven o'clock one night and then eight o'clock the next night. So that is almost. I mean, that's twenty four hours in between a game. So that kind of is like. I mean, it's it's a day in between, sort of. You know what I mean? Technically, it is a day in between, but we look at it as a back to back because it's the next day, even though it's 24 hours later. You know what I mean? So, but let's face it: when when those guys are out there skating around like that, that exerts a lot of energy, and it takes a lot of time to recover that. You know what I mean? There's no and travel time though, so that's that's. A good I agree, but I'm also of the ilk that I don't think there should be any of these back to backs during the playoffs. I. Impossible to do this year, but in, Agreed. in, in a normal situation, I, yeah. I, I yeah. <laughs> yeah, I agree. No, I agree. Um, but it just seems like, and then the, the Joe, you also made the other point too, where they switched because mm -hmm. Philadelphia was, um, uh, and that's something that we had uh, made a point about with uh, our podcast last week about. Well, why is Tampa Bay and Boston getting all the primetime slots and we're getting all the 12 o'clocks and the 3 o'clocks and the, you know, the, the, the off hour starts? And then we were like, well, OK, um, we get the first ice. So, all right, I'll take first ice, you know, instead of second tired ice. But now they switched and now Philadelphia is now playing the primetime games and Tampa Bay and, and Boston are now playing the, the other off games. So. I think yeah, it's I think... the series. I think the league got a feeling for that series, and when they saw Boston last game, and then combined with today, I don't today. think they're going to get any more. Pro they might get one more prime time game. Like, I, let me see if they even have another one on the schedule. They have a prime time game Monday. They're at seven o'clock, but okay. that might also be it. Philly like, might be that off might, that game. That might, well, no, yeah, we don't have a game on Monday, but I'm saying that might be the send off of the Bruins from the bubble because the Lightning could end them at seven o'clock on Monday night. They're up three to one. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, okay. Okay, cool. In so actuality, the Islanders have been screwed more than that. Nobody's played more day games than the Islanders through this playoff. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Almost every was... game against Florida yeah. and every game against Washington, almost every single one of them have been afternoon games. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So they've actually played – they've actually been playing on the, the first ice more so than anybody else, right? Because – It's just the day games um, – it, it really bothers players. Uh, that screws up the routines. It does. And, stuff like that. and yeah, uh, 
in actuality, again, tomorrow's game with the Islanders is going to be a tough one for Philly because they've been used to day games now for a while. They've kind of built up maybe a little bit of a routine around it, where in Philly is maybe not so much and stuff like that. Tomorrow's going to be the really tough game. I don't want, I hope the players aren't thinking like that. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Speaking about, speaking about being a tough game now, we should be the one we should be able to win. Yeah, I agree. No, I agree. But speaking about being a tough game, we heard from uh, whether whether we were allowed to hear or not, we heard uh, from Scotty Lawton that said that he was healthy. Okay, and so now that we've heard that he's healthy, what do you think uh, as far as the lineups are going to be, Perlo? Do you think we're going to go with the same guys that we went with in the previous game, or because of what you said, um, do you think we're going to put a little bit more of the muscle in and try to be a little bit more physical uh, now that we've had a couple days rest? What do you think, Perlo? I think they'll go with the same lineup today. I think the muscle would come tomorrow because, because if you're not going to outspeed a team, you better be able to beat them up. Uh, so that would be – that's kind of what A.V., we talked about it before when he did that in the lineup with Montreal. That he says, okay, if you're not going to go fast, then we better beat them up. You know, <laughs> he played, he played that really ugly game in one – when Joe was yeah. – Oh, really yeah. Ugly game, but we, beat, we did beat them. We physically beat them up. So I think that would likely be the case. Um, as far as Lawton is concerned, I wonder – we were wondering why they weren't putting – him in the middle and we don't know injuries at all right now like not even close is it possible that injury was hand or wrist related that's what he had that's earlier the reason why they weren't putting him in the middle this whole time is it possible that that wrist is okay now after this couple of days and they're going to try him in the middle which would answer a lot of questions we had with why not put him in the middle so we can take uh put some better guys on the wings yeah well i was going to say lots has had some bugaboo issues with his hand this year so that's why when he scored that one goal where he flipped it they're like well his hand must be feeling pretty good because that was a sick flip goal on that one breakaway so maybe I it got aggravated it. again but yeah, you don't know it say. could be something else we don't you know like he you missed said, time don't. he missed time because of a broken finger or something this year right is that yeah, what it was I, it was I a broken finger it, i can't remember but he had to have surgery on somebody, it somebody, yeah right so, but he had to have like surgery that. on it Right. So that could look uh, your hands are some of the most important pieces of equipment in playing hockey because uh, it's how you you grip the stick, you know. And so like we saw when Coots got injured, he had to change his style of face offs and they didn't put him in the face off dot because of his injury. You know what I mean? Because of the motion that he had to do in order to do the face offs was aggravating his injury. So he was out there. He just wasn't taking any of the face offs. You see what I'm saying? So that's that's why I think it might have been something that had to do with his wrist hand or something. So well, that's all great points. But with him being declared, quote unquote, healthy, do you think we're going to see him? I mean, what do you think? I mean, Perlo, you said that we're going to go with the lineup that we went with the last game. Professor, what do you think we're going to go with? Do you think we're going to go with the, the the same lineup that we did, or do you think we're going to insert Lawton into the lineup and do a little shake-up? Uh, you might insert Scotty just because he's in your starting lineup technically, so you had to put someone else in for him. Um, but it's going to be interesting. Uh, it's going to be Grant or Thompson, I would think. That would get yanked for Lawton if they put Lawton in. Uh, it would kind of be take a pick. For this game, I would pick Thompson just because, like Pirlo said, this is probably going to be the quicker game that everyone's moving a little bit quicker this game and tomorrow is going to be the slow game. So if you want to have Thompson and you should have Thompson in the game, you know it's going to be aggressive, moving slow. Everyone's going to might have slower legs. You don't want him in the game that everyone's coming off of a two-day layoff and going a million miles a minute to start the game because that ain't Nate Thompson's game at all. <laughs> no. So that's why I'm saying if I would pull him for anybody, it would be Thompson. I would okay. put Lawton in for Thompson and let Grant play the speed game. And then if Grant plays bad again today, then you just move him out tomorrow for Nate Thompson because Thompson. it's probably going to be a slower game, like yeah. you're saying, because of the comeback. And it's going to be a two straight night games, and especially for the aisle because, like Pirlo pointed out, they probably got into somewhat of a used to a routine from starting at three, starting at like starting at different times of the afternoon rather than seven, eight o'clock at night a little bit. So. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, yeah, let me say that 
maybe I, I might have been I have to rethink that again. If Lawton is ready, yeah, I would think that he would be in the lineup. So I, I have to adjust what I said. I do think there could be a change uh, because, and I hope it's for Thompson. And I hope he plays in the middle. I hope his hand's okay or whatever the case might be. That would be a good idea. I agree with Joe there for sure. Yeah, I would, I would also agree with that. But see, I would like to see them do what we had suggested back when we did like our pregame show or a couple games back when, 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 because uh, I would like to see Giroux up the middle. Because oh, if, oh, yeah. Yeah, if yeah. you put Giroux in the middle and you put Lots in the middle, okay, and you put Coots in the middle, that's three, that's three middle guys. And then you just sprinkle everybody else around them. That's yeah. kind of that's kind of how I'm looking at it. I don't even care. I think who's the, on the problem, fourth line. Scotty, is they don't like putting him at center anymore because he actually plays, in the organization's opinion, a much better wing than he plays center. He plays a better two hundred foot game. Do more. we have somebody else that we could put at center that Bless could you. be that answer? That could be that speed? I mean, look, we don't have that player on the on the roster right now, but. Is there somebody that we have in the bubble right now that we could put in there that could fix that issue? That would allow Giroux to go to center, would allow Lots to play either center or wing, I don't care, on the third or fourth line, I don't care, but who do we put in there? Instead of Thompson or Grant, you could put Connor in for Thompson or Grant since he moves a little bit quicker than well, he moves a lot quicker than Thompson. Uh, We're talking about having a quicker game. Who's about the... Same. He has long strides, so he doesn't really move much slower than Grant. Um, where Grant's a quicker skater than Bunneman, but Bunneman has those big strides. So he's a taller guy. Yeah, you could put him in, I guess. I know A V loves him. He is a younger guy with no experience other than the games he's played this year. Right. Um, and he's I thought he's looked relatively he's had some tater parts too, but I thought he's looked relatively okay. Yeah. And then Morgan, of course, hasn't been in at all. So I don't, unless if you have a game that you think you have to put him in, I'm not sure if he's just going to get put in. Um, but we'll see what happens. I mean, our offense has still been pretty abysmal. I mean, last game it wasn't good either. We scored all in the first and then got, and then the it went away. Period. And they came back. And then Sanheim was our, or not Sanheim, Myers was our savior in the overtime with a blast off of, I believe it was Anders Lee stick. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, that wasn't really a good offensive game, in my opinion, through and through either. That's why I think we might change the lineup because it wasn't a bad game overall. We played a good game overall. It just wasn't a good offensive game other than the first period. And then it wasn't a good defensive game in about the last five minutes, which is what <laughs> – made the Islanders come back and get to overtime. So the problem with the Flyers' is players is they haven't once played, even in the round robin, I would say, because they they maybe in the round robin, other than that, they haven't once played a full six. Thank so, you. Thank you. Because even at times in the round robin, we were doing really well, but it was like you would see pressure for like 10 minutes, but it just nothing would happen because we controlled the whole rest of the game, where exactly. that's not happening in the play. Nope. And we're fighting it. We're grabbing our sticks a little tighter. We're fighting a little bit more. Pearl, what do you think about – do you think we're going to see a little lineup change tonight? Or do you think – I mean, we all kind of feel that we need speed up the middle. What What do you think would be a, a good move here? Um, I know Lawton can be better on the wing, but I think he's infinitely better than Thompson as a center. I would play lots on the fourth line and put him on the power play or penalty kill. I would get some offense from that from that fourth line, and uh, some speed from that fourth line because the New York Islanders have that. You know that's that's we're putting speed all through our lineup that way. That's kind of what I would say I would do. I don't know what Av's love affair with Thompson is, except for maybe that he does bring some sort of energy on the bench, and that is valuable. I mean, it's extremely valuable. I'm not on the bench. I can't tell. Uh, he's some sort of a leader that way or something like that. I'm not sure. Um, but I love AV and I'm going to, you know, give him the benefit of the doubt here. Uh, also, I'm trying to as well. <laughs> uh, well I, I, okay. I have that same question. What is the love affair? Look, I thought they were great acquisitions at the trade deadline, Grant and Thompson. 
And I believe that they helped us through a period of time where we needed, because we were missing JVR for a period of time, and then we were missing um, Lawton there for a, a period of time because of their injuries and stuff like that. And and we needed some help, and we needed some depth, okay? And they were brought in to fulfill those needs. Well, we have to remember, too, uh, Gag, Simone Gagne, former flyer, talked about AV because he played with them in junior. Um, like he was his coach in June, and he said he changed a lot and now he's definitely a player's coach. So if you're a player's coach and you have guys coming up on contract years and you know, they're probably not going to be with you, you're trying to do best by them too. And yeah. if you're more of a player's coach that thinks more from the heart sometimes than just up here, which AV is one of those guys, yeah. mm-hmm. it's sometimes going to influence your decision a bit. Cause you're going to say Grant's been very good in the regular season. He'll probably snap back eventually. I want to see what's best for this kid after he's gone, too. And I think that's kind of how nice AV is, where sometimes it probably nips him in the butt with the lineup. But it also, but it does bring loyalty to make those decisions. That's why yeah. I really don't want to you know, slam AV too much for this, because if I'm in the environment, maybe I'm doing the same thing for reasons that I can't see oh, no, yeah. from, out, from out here. Right, oh, but no, when I was I'm on the ice that and I see Thompson, yeah. I go, uh, okay. Yeah, that was, more, <laughs> yeah, that that was more that was more of a compliment because that just goes to show how nice of a person uh, you are, if, um, and how much you care about <laughs> players. Yeah. When you okay. keep throwing them out there, when all right, Watts is a better center than Thompson. Period. All day long. Yeah. All day long. So. All but day that's long. my point. If you that's keep not throwing. happening, I don't know. Remember what I said when that last game when we were heading off when we did that? I said that what the Islanders were going to do is say make sure they don't score another goal. That's all that matters, is they don't score another goal after they exactly. scored. Exactly. And like, and that's because that's what Frost was going to do. And but, because we didn't score that first goal back. We didn't make it forward enough, and if we would have made it forward enough, then that would have been a different story. And that's why Trotz gets in his player's head. I don't care. I do care if you lose a game, but I care more that if you lose the game, you don't allow that next goal. And that's the way they played, and um, that's what happens then is the other team gets frustrated, which we did. Philadelphia got frustrated from not being able to put it away, and um, next thing you know, the Islanders are back in the game again. <laughs> yeah, I I knew that when we had that first power play, and we weren't able to bury it. I knew right then and there because we weren't able to get that fourth goal because that's what we need. Because obviously three isn't going to get it. And I quite honestly, I agree with what you're saying, because if we would have had four goals, I think we would have played a slightly different game than the way we did against with three goals. Okay, Mm -hmm. at least I hope that's what we would have done. I mean, look, all we can do is guess at this point and, and it's already spilled milk, so it's already over. So it doesn't really matter. You know what I mean? We're we're just going to. okay. so what's the trend? You know, is the trend going to be, you know, this game is going to be tough. This game is going to be a battle, and this game is going to require the Flyers to maintain consistency and play a 60-minute game. Because, Joe, I agree with you 100%. We have yet to put together a full 60 minutes. I have seen in each game periods of time where it looks like we're playing the Flyers' way, and then I've seen far too much of time where we're spending t- too much time down in our end we're and we're not playing Flyers hockey. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We're like Arizona. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's like, all right, quarter roll you buddy. Like, yeah, okay. <laughs> how do you how can you you we have so much confidence in this guy? He has been playing out of his freaking mind. Since he's been back to the since he's since he's landed in Philadelphia, he has played out of his mind. And all we continue to do this entire time that we've been back in the bubble is hang this kid out to dry. Yeah. At some point. I mean, I'm surprised it hasn't happened yet. You know, here we are now. We're into the second series now. I'm surprised it hasn't happened yet. And he's already been pulled once. Right? 
I, I'm surprised he hasn't broken. I mean, you don't play with somebody's psyche like that. Uh, Carter. I, was, yeah. That's what I love yeah. about Carter. Yeah, I think Carter's pretty similar to guys like Price, and like that's why he got compared to him, too, because it's kind of like you can be as bad to him as you want as his team, and he's still going to make sure he makes every possible save for your team, even if he honestly doesn't like you. Like, if you're someone <laughs> on defense that's playing defense for him and he simply just doesn't like you, he's still going to make sure he makes that save for you because he cares about the betterment of the team. And I think that's exactly – now, I don't think Carter Hart dislikes anybody, obviously, but I'm saying <clears throat> I think he would be exactly like that where those goalies – there's just some goalies quick was like that in his prime. It didn't matter how the camp yeah. was playing. He yeah. was always going to try to make every one of the saves, and I think that's exactly yeah. how – Mm-hmm. Same with Tim Tom. Yeah. Tim Thomas did with the Bruins late in his career. Yeah. Big game, they allowed 70 shots, and he would be diving around like he's 26, <laughs> when he's like 39 years old. Yeah, right. Uh, so, I mean, like, that, yeah, that was pretty impressive. I don't think I've ever seen, seriously, I don't think I've ever seen, not Price, nobody. I've, I don't think I've ever seen a, a goaltender at this age, especially, lo- allow things to just be without really being affected by anything at all. I don't think I've ever seen it. Uh, the closest, I would say, would be Brodeur. Uh, Patrick Waugh could be ca- taken off his game sometimes. Dominic Hasek at times could li- could be a loose cannon. Uh, Brodeur was too susceptible and later in his career was able to be taken off his game. But I think I agree with you, though. But Price, Price um, even, even Price... Uh, I just think that that was my favorite thing when I, when he was coming up in the league, I was like, this kid's going to be insane. And it's not like he has steel nerves. It's, it's, it's just, he has this personality that purely naturally does not get affected by anything at all. He's just people like that. There's just people like that. You yeah, know what I mean? It's just like, like that. There's just, just people naturally, like that. naturally incredibly like that. That's why That's when, like they said, when AV him. put him back in, and Kelly Rudy was freaking out about it because um, that AV did that to Carter Hart. I understand why Car- AV did that. AV would not do that to just about any goaltender. And I understand right. Kelly Rudy saying, why would you do that? Because any other human being generally, you would not do that to. But you can do that to Carter Hart. He'd be like, eh, okay. Yeah, that was yeah, like a pitcher. That was that. Was, that doesn't happen in baseball. That's like when your manager goes, or that happens in baseball. It doesn't happen in hockey. That's like when your manager goes out and says with 105 pitches, "Hey, you good, kid? Yeah, I got you. You sure? Yeah, I got you." And then you just walk back <laughs> to the dugout. Yeah, that's right. What that, that's what that is. You don't see that in hockey when you pull the goal, come bring the goal to the bench and say, "You good? Yeah, I got you, coach. You sure? Yeah, I got you." And then you just like that never happens. And then he just skates back yeah. into the net and goes back that, playing. That like, was like the first time I've seen that in my entire life. Av Av looked at his face and said and thought at the very second that he's want, that he's going back in there, and um, that told I totally make sense to me. You look at Carter Hart's face and he looks like okay. He, he, you're not going to kill him if you pull him, and you're not going to kill him if you leave him in. Right. He's that kind of guy. It doesn't matter which one you do. So you might as well leave him in. Might as well. Yeah. Hey. I, I thought it was a great move. I thought but it was I also a thought, Yeah, but I also thought it was a good move that he did pull him when he did. Sure. Because he basically saved him from getting even worse pummeling than before. Because He was going to, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's why I think pulling him when, when they did and putting Elliot in. You know what I mean? That's why that's why I wanted to ask those questions, because I really think that it would be a good idea. Like we are, I think and maybe some other people think that it would be a good idea to play Elliot because it's a back to back, back to back, whatever. But, you know, what? he has proven that he's been able to come in and play in this situation. And if he's been able to play in this situation, and and not only was he able to play in this situation, but he thrived. We had two games of zero goals from yep. Carter Hart. What? Yep. Back to back. Hey, how you doing? So, mm-hmm. can the magic happen again? Oh, yeah. Can we sprinkle some Carter Hart on there and get another two game of goallessness? Ooh, that would be nice. Nothing would I think surprise I would like that. me with that kid. Nothing would surprise me with him. Yeah, absolutely, no doubt about it. I picked Philly <laughs> because of that. I, I would I, go for that Tampa all day. Bay's team looks stacked, but I I trust Carter Hart. I just yeah, I love that kid. Yeah. 
I'm with you on that. I'll tell you what, uh, Perlo, give me your final thoughts on the game for today. Um, well, first of all, I'm just really excited to be able to, to watch it. Um, I think it's going to be a, a fantastic ta- ta- tactical game, tactical game. There you that's go. What I'm lo- that's what I'm loving about this series yeah. because you have two great minds in AV and Trots. You have um, a great defensive team in the Islanders and, you know, Carter Hart. I, I just I could watch that guy all day. Just love watching. Even if I'm not a Philadelphia Flyers fan, I'm watching this game just because to me it's a fascinating series to watch the back and forth that are happening and stuff like that. Um, it's also going to be interesting to see which team controls their emotions the most over what's happened with the last two days and all of these things that have happened. Um, I'm excited for it. I think it's I think it's going to be fantastic either way. But I got Philly ML all day long. Um, they're winning for sure no doubt about it that's my final right there you heard it here first boys and girls right here professor joe lay it on me buddy give me some final thoughts about the game today what do you think i think uh i think the flyers are going to do pretty good today i think having launch back is going to help i think also well if he's in but i'm assuming they'll put him in if he's healthy yeah um and then also, Carter Hart, I think having these couple of days probably does best for him because he was, like I said, so many days in a row. So he got a little bit of a break there. I think we're going to see, I hope, similar to the Lightning and Bruins where there's a lot of skating and intensity at the beginning of the game. It's not like, well, okay, I guess everyone forgot how to play hockey in two days. Um, so well, like I don't think that's going to be the yeah, case. Yeah, like there's going to be – where it was kind of at the beginning of the bubble where you were kind of waiting for everybody to get into it a bit, but it's only (laughs) been two days. Um, So I think you're going to see similar to that game. And hopefully we're the team like Tampa that's doing all those offensive rushes in the first, I don't care about the shot. total. I'm talking about high scoring chances. Uh, They get all the high scoring chances. They could have 15 shots and we could have 10. If seven of them were high scoring chances and they had two, I care about that number more than and, I care and, about. And, and we have one, and we have more goals than they do. Then yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that's what people <laughs> don't get sometimes when looking at things. Be like, oh, we had so much more shots, but how many good scoring chances did we have? Because if I'm slap shotting it from the blue line every time I come in, and that gives us 80 shots, Much well, I didn't. Us, yeah, I didn't give us a great chance to score. So yeah. um, that's more what I'm. I think this team needs to get in front of the net more, cut off Orlando off sight line. Or Grice, since they didn't know who they were going to put in this game since Semyon got pulled. So we'll see what happens here. But I think it'll go back to Varlamov with a couple of days. But we'll see. Um, I think you got to block them out. We haven't blocked the goalies out enough in this playoffs. We did a little bit in the round robin, not much. And then we didn't at all, really, since the playoffs started. Agreed. So. Agreed. That's awesome, man. You all, both great points. I, I'm going to say this. I think Carter Hart's going to be the star of the show, and I think this. I think that Lawton would be a good, great addition to put into the lineup. I think that we should get that speed up the middle that we need, and I think we should be the one being the aggressive team. We need to be the one dictating. We need to be playing more down on their end instead of them playing down on our end. We need to be the ones dictating the rush. We need to be the ones skating the puck in. If we do those things and we sag back responsibly like we play and if we put full 60 minutes out there, then all day flyers on this all day. But this is why when we came into this whole thing that I had no fear of any of the metropolitan teams or any teams in the East, including Tampa Bay, Boston, I don't care because of how we played in the regular season. But now I'm seeing a bit of a different team here now, and I'm a little bit going, okay, wait a second. What's going on here? Something's not quite, you know, I feel like the Lion King, hmm, the herd is on the move. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like something's not right here. And until we get that righted, until we get that speed up the neutral zone, and until we start playing like effing flyers, because that's what I think we need to do. Once we start playing like that, then I think we got this this in the bag. Uh, I'm definitely looking for the flyers to take this game tonight. 
Um, I agree with you guys made such great points about uh, how everything's going to come together as far as that's concerned. And I also agree to Perlo that it's going to be interesting to see how, because there's going to be some probably some pregame things that are going to happen like they did with the Tampa Bay game and emotions are going to be high based off the fact of everything that's been going on and, and all that stuff. So it's going to be interesting to see what that first 10 minutes is going to look like. And if the flyers do not come out gunning, then I think this is going to be a, a, a long night. Mm-hmm. So, yep. with with that, with that, uh, we're we're gonna we we're all picking the Flyers to win on this one. I think, um, Perlo, <laughs> how can we get a hold of you? Ah, you can go to www.steelflyers.com. You can find all my information, everything I have there. We look and uh, I'd have, just check out the website now. But there's going to be a really possibly. Some stuff going on there so keep watching it keep going to it it's going to be great um i have both uh boric and i are part of something called be pal picks you can find that on patreon we send fine picks to people for their financial services <laughs> they make tons of money <laughs> and uh we enjoy doing that we're hitting big on ball and uh, hockey right now and we'll continue doing so uh, my nhl pearls of wisdom of course you guys all know that Everybody in the land knows that. Uh, and I'm involved with these guys in all they do as well, especially what Bork does and uh, Steele does all the time. So you, their information is my information, really. Finest in the land. Thanks very much for, for joining us, Perlo. Professor Joe, thanks for holding class today. Uh, how can we get a hold of you, man? Well, same thing, like Perlo said on the Steel Flyers website. Check it out on Sports Fanatic News with a P for the Philly Fanatic on my YouTube channel. Uh, Flyers Nitty and then Overtime Heroics and Pub Sports and I think that's it. There might be a yep. couple more, but I remember some other time. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, it's been it's been great having both of you. Um, like they both said, um, you can go to the Steel Flyers website, www.steelflyers.com. Uh, it's a one-stop shop. You can check out all their great videos, links to all of them, uh, links to get in touch with them, and links to follow them because you really need to be following these guys because these guys are the professionals for sure. Also, stay tuned for some very, very important announcements coming up and – some also important announcements about an, an upcoming show too. So lots of great stuff coming to you. And we want to thank you guys for joining us. Hit the subscribe, hit the like, and do all that kind of fun stuff. Let us know what you think. Thanks for joining us on the Steel Flyers video podcast. Thanks, guys. Have a good one. Lots of love to you. Enjoy the hockey. <laughs>